Howdy, folks. So, um, I'm still working on the 2019 Jeep Compass review. Uh, I just gave that car back today, and now I have a uh, the new Jetta. And I'll be honest, I skimmed Auto Week's review of this car, and then skimmed the corporate literature. Uh, but otherwise, I uh, we're still getting acquainted. Um, this being so, this this is the new new. This is a new new one. This is a. I think they might have even used, of course, that classical word, old term, all new. Jetta. Um, I'm gonna try not to get ahead of myself tonight. I have given myself the task of learning how to use the dynamic cruise control. That's my task tonight. Um, so I'm gonna go on the highway. Uh, let me just tell you, I'm glad, <laughs> glad to be out of the compass and in this. Um, this car is gorgeous. It's the second from the topest, from the topest, second from the top trim. So this is the SEL. The top trim um, is the SEL Premium. I could be wrong about that again. Fairly new to the literature. Okay, I'm going to focus right now. Um, try to focus on switch on ACC. Press the button. I'm going to have to take you away from this gorgeous display here. Show you since since we're doing this. Um, yeah. I personally prefer gauges. I would never, you know, there's just that thing. I would never want to own a car. But let me tell you. Okay, so this is, uh, this is beautiful. Um, okay, so I've turned it on. Press the set button. Okay, obviously we're stopped. But how do I, setting the distance interval. Set using the, that one. Ah! So here's our distances. That's far, uncomfortably close. No, unfortunately that's not, it's just very close. Close. I guess we're gonna try it. Medium. It really, it's a pleasure. I'm sure we're gonna get used to it, but it's really a pleasure using such a great display. Um, okay, I guess that's all I need to know. So again, the lighting's not gonna be great here, um, and I apologize for that. But, oh! They gave me a Volkswagen hat, which is like fucking used. It feels used, but thanks. Thanks for the hat. Um, believe it or not, I am not that type of person. Hey, Red, that type of person to wear branded automotive gear, but we're gonna do that for at least five minutes, okay? Again, I'm gonna have to, ooh. Um, I'm afraid I'm just gonna have to be in darkness, folks. I'm sorry. And I'm kind of blocking the display here, so I might have to pull the phone. Uh, just, and it makes sense. I mean, I haven't been driving cars. It's been since 2015, since I was really driving a lot of new cars. So it makes sense that I would be like, completely wowed by this you know, just released for the 2019 model year car. Um, I have driven one other Jetta, and I don't know the generations, but I, I think it's two generations ago. I've driven the Mark VI and the Mark V Golf GTI. That was so much fun. Um, I got to drive them back to back. That was a lot of fun. But 
let me just say the driving position. Um, this is a, I, I was kind of blown away by this and I know it's still a Jetta, but for the amount of technology that I'm seeing and how well executed it's been, and then granted, I, we're just, I've only had the car for, I've only been using the car for a, a maximum of like 45 minutes. So, <laughs> um, I don't know how, if I can, can I brighten up the display to give me some more light here? I guess like I, I'm sorry. Um, it's gonna be a mostly dark scope, I'm afraid. Anyway, my point is just I'm very, incredibly impressed. This feels like, I mean, it's a Jetta. It's a $22,000 car as this one is equipped. It's like twenty two five. Um, and goodness gracious. Compared to that, that $33,000 2019 Compass, which the Compass was new for last year, so... Um, it's it's just that contrast is is just incredible. <laughs> um, granted, I did take that compass on some gravel roads. I promised I'd scope it, but I didn't. I took it on some actual county gravel roads. That brought, the problem is that by the time you get rural enough that it's actually a test, there's no signal. So, um, oh yeah, apparently this car is in-car Wi-Fi. I don't know if this one's got that working or not um, but yeah I don't even know I honestly I have already forgotten the basic specs on this thing so I'm just gonna focus on experience okay but I can the reason the phone is where it is, is because I can read questions how does it drive um well so far I haven't really been in a situation where I can really tell, but so far it's like, unlike anything I've driven quite yet. Um, and that's a that's a kind of a ridiculous thing to say about a Jetta, because it is fundamentally a Jetta, right? They, you know, Volkswagen is a Titan everywhere else in the world, and they're a conservative one. Um, but it's, it's a little boomy, but for a compact car, man, this is the most refined compact experience. Yeah, um, it is, okay, that's the thing about Volkswagen is like, this car has a ton of technology um, and, you know, some interesting styling, but none of it is extreme. It's very competent. Yeah, the CC, I've always liked the way the CC looks. CC's a big girl, though. That's a big girl. Um, and I, I don't really, I, I, you know, even beyond my, it's been a few years since I actually wrote about cars last, uh, Volkswagen is just something that I'm not prompted to talk about very much because the United States just doesn't get Volkswagen. Like, the, if you see the numbers of how many Jettas and Golfs Volkswagen sells in Europe and the rest of the world, I mean, it's fucking crazy. But like here, um, you know, there's the, there's the Jetta stereotype. Uh, I, I really love the driving position. I don't understand quality. Yeah. I mean, for one thing, Volkswagen has a little bit of a premium. Um, oh, I love the way the controls feel. I've never driven a brand, brand new zero owner VW before. So, and this one, well, it's big and loud. Yeah, the whole world is kind of because of because cars have to conform to um, an amalgam of regulations, and yet car companies want one model to sell everywhere. You know, cars have gotten huge. This Jetta is like 
and I don't, I haven't confirmed the dimensions, but the first time I saw it, I was just like, wow, I think that thing's bigger than the, so this compact Jetta is like bigger than the mid-sized Accord was just three generations ago. So like 2005. Um, okay. Oh yeah. So I, my task is to try the adaptive cruise control. Give me just a second here. I'm going to pull you off so I can see. Okay. So I, there's a little picture of the car in front of me. And I just hit set. Okay. Did they redesign it for 2018? 2019. At least that's what they told me. I have only... So I read a skimmed Auto Week's review of this car, uh, but that's it. I have not had the time to actually do my research yet. And I skimmed the literature that I got, but... Okay, so now the car is not there. So now I'm just doing a regular cruise control at 57 miles an hour, which is... speed limit. How about that? Wow! That's a surprising amount of oomph from a uh, uh, again, I I don't even remember the displacement of this engine, but it's 145 horsepower. Hang on a second. I'm actually trying to get close enough to the car in front of me. I've never used adaptive cruise control before. So that's my task tonight. Okay, there's the car. And I just do that, right? And my distance, let's make it pretty far. Thanks for talking. Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna spend a good few weeks on this car. Yeah. Well, I'm. Thank you for being interested. Um. But tonight is all about using adaptive cruise control for the first time. This is fun. I wish I could hack this car. So it's got five settings: very close, close, medium, far, and very far. And you know, my first joke, of course, is. I want to hack it and do an uncomfortably close setting, which is like six feet from the car in front of me. It's a funny joke, guys. Funny. Still entertaining. Uh, so I actually, and guys, I um, since this is Periscope, I can disclose this little bit of personal knowledge. I invented adaptive cruise control when I was eight years old. Of course, it had already been invented, but I didn't know that. Um, that's how much time I spent in, in cars as a kid with divorced parents. This red accenting really, it's like silent running in a submarine. It's pretty cool. Um, I've, okay, I, I keep starting. The immediate thing is the seat is the driver position is so exceptional. It's funny to me that, that you know, the, the one sign that it's still a Jetta is that I have to manually adjust the seat, even though it's heated. Um, but then again, think, think about like a German. How often do you actually change your seating position? Unless you're like experiencing weird growth spurts, uh, or the car is like shared between eight people. Why do you need the extra weight of electronic, electronically adjusted seats? Um, unless you have a really terrible back problem or something. I get. I don't know. I mean, I the, the worst thing is accidentally triggering it, and it's like, oh fuck, I messed up my perfect setting. What trim level is this? This is the SEL, so it's not the SEL Premium. This is the one beneath that. Um. Yeah, the SL Premium does add. 
the motorized seats, but um, no powered seats, no. But uh, I mean, me, that makes sense to me because you know, if we actually want to make cars efficient, and this car, they're claiming it gets 45 miles to the gallon. The number I did really notice from the literature is a 0.27 coefficient of drag, which is very impressive, let's just say that. Um, especially if, I mean, that's, I could be mistaken, but I'm guessing that's better than the current Prius, or on par with it, because the Honda Insight, the first generation Honda Insight was 0.31, which was like, I mean, for engineers at least, you know, that's like fucking mind-blowing. Um, air doesn't even matter at that point. 2015 GTI base trim. Yeah, but okay, so the, that's the Mark VI, which I've driven one of those. Um, the, the GTI is a premium trim package. Uh, and the, the, I, the reason why the GTI and the Golf, and instead of it being just the Golf GTI... Oh, is it Mark 7? God, see, I'm fucking behind. I've never driven a Mark 7. I really want to. God damn, I remember reading the, the rumor... The rumor literature about that being released, and that seems like it was yesterday. So, I am behind, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I bet. I bet. I drove a, I was saying just a few minutes ago, I drove a Mark V and a Mark VI back to back, and that was one of the most, uh, it shit itself. Ooh. I'm gonna, it, sh it shit itself, really. That's good to know. I guess I should be playing around with the distances. Let's see if, all right, you, this guy has no idea that I'm playing I'm doing an experiment on him. Let's see how close, very close is. Technology is amazing, folks. I am, okay. Right now, we're at the point where I would be no longer comfortable and it's still closing in. Okay, that seems to be very close. Whoops, sorry. Okay, what does the car do now? Now we just reset to 72 miles an hour. Way okay, we reset we speed up a lot. Now I'm gonna change my adaptive thing back to let's try far and we'll see if we can catch up to the car in front of us. Uh, let's try plus five. I might run out of signal at some point. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm not catching up to anybody, yet, so I'm gonna put this back. Try to. I'm sorry, runner. A lot of road noise. Yeah, that is a lot of road noise, but that is to be expected. Okay, I don't see a cancel button. Much as I love the steering wheels, we're just gonna try it. There's control off. There we go. Move you over a little bit. It's 81 miles an hour. Get pulled over. Uh, sorry, officer. I was just periscoping. It's, okay, again, I'm behind on the industry stuff, but there are plenty of good journalists out there talking about stuff that matters. Same digital cluster in the Audis, yeah. That's the advantage of the Volkswagen group, man. Um, you know, if I bought this car, I would go around being like, yeah, it's got a digital dash, uh, just like the new Rolls Royce. Might even be the same part. I'm going to assume that that's not, not correct, but 
It doesn't matter. No one else cares. The new Phantom does have a digital dash and, you know. Okay. I don't want to get pulled over. But this semi appears to be going 10 miles an hour on the speed limit. There's 87 miles an hour. God, I, I'm sorry. Living in Portland has turned me into a fucking... second rule uh, I'd say that very close setting was was violating it just a tad I'm sure the Germans have a equivalent of the three second rule that includes several stipulations um, but okay so that was my task I learned how to use the adaptive cruise control God, what a handy thing. There are still people, I mean, I, I'm going to assume that because there's such a higher standard in Europe to just be able to own and drive a car, like for instance here, you know, you will see on the highway in the American Midwest, someone in a 20 year old Buick Century that literally has a flat tire, okay? Literally has a flat tire and they're going 70. Okay, when I say flat, just enough pressure that it is not actively shredding. So like 5, 10 PSI. Um, and they will just drive like that. That's why we have enough our speed limits. But, um, where is I going with that? Sorry, I'm tired. It's been a long day. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to assume everyone in Europe uses cruise control more than the people who hear. Um, my mother, okay, someone, she's a social worker, someone who's driven a shitload throughout her life, did not know what cruise control was until she was 55 when we were driving down to uh, New Orleans, and I was like, Mom, can you please use the cruise control? And she was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but, um, this is just personal story time, I'm sorry. If you have any questions about the Jetta, please do ask me. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to answer um, like thoroughly from literature, but I can at least tell you what it's like. Um, and aside from the tremendous, not tremendous, but the road noise, which were on the manufacturer standard tire, tires, the Bridgestone somethings. They're not run flats, thank God. Oh, the thing I did notice, this car has a third again or more. What does it smell like? See, I actually, when I first got in, um, what does it smell like? It is kind of a different new car smell than others. Um, it's not necessarily a, one that makes you go, ah, oh, the joy of a new car smell is just like, wow, this is a new German product. <laughs> um, it smells clean and unfettered. It is sterile. Yeah, I was gonna because it usually when you think of the when you use the adjective sterile to describe a smell, usually that, you know, includes like some chemical-y stuff. There's no, I don't smell any like, it's not like cleaning chemical-esque. Um, but it just smells like leather. <laughs> like new leather. Uh, 
beautiful. I'm very impressed by all the surfaces in this car. I love this steering wheel. I love that it has no buttons on the back. They're only on the front and they're very clearly marked and very satisfying to use. Um. Uh, oh, what I was saying about the cruise control thing is nobody uses their cruise, uses their cruise control here for whatever reason. So I'll, you'll be on the interstate. Um, I use the cruise control as soon as I fucking can, as often as I can. Um, and you'll be on the interstate and you like, okay, it's the middle of the night, you match with someone, you found a buddy driving uh, across the country and they're going like the speed that you wanna go, the speed that you feel na is natural and the speed that you're willing to go, right? But they keep varying by like one or two miles an hour. And then like, if you're not thinking about it, you like keep passing them and they'll pass you. Um, and you're just doing this as the miles go by. Oh, wow, okay, you're speeding a lot. Jesus Christ. I'm in that person now, wow. <laughs> Things have changed since honk. Um, but that is like the last really annoying thing, at least for me, on the interstate is, is people that don't use their cruise control. Oh, the way, I mean, it's, we're still pushing this thing down too many gears, but. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is very, very impressive power delivery there. It doesn't even sound all that bad, even though this engine was very much tuned for efficiency. God, it's, so, it's just so much better of an automobile than that compass I just cut out of. Ugh, um... Whew. Anyway. So, for American roads especially, adaptive cruise control is the shit. I think so. I, I, like, we're on my first hour with this car, so not that that's necessarily an excuse. To be honest, I haven't switched my car and driver and motor trend sub subscriptions back home yet. They're still being sent to some Portland address. So that's another excuse. <laughs> Even though you can get a subscription to either one of those for literally like $5 a year. That's the point that, that our industry has gotten. Um, my, what I'm saying is, I don't know. I know it's 145 horsepower. I just can't remember. I haven't gotten in there yet, so I apologize. If you, for whatever reason, trust me above all other automotive media, my review of this car will be coming probably next year. Um, I'm gonna spend as much time with it as I can. And I'm not thrilled about the road noise, but it's a compact car. You can't, you, you can't get 45 miles to the gallon if you pump it full of sound deadening, you know? Uh, my final numbers on that compass, by the way, like, I averaged, like, 24 or something. Uh, just, ugh. Very tired of driving Fiat Chrysler products that um, it is not my car. It is not my car. And I thought about that a lot in the past hour. <laughs> um, I am looking to buy a car soon, but um, my niece is gonna lend me her Scion TC for a while. Which is incredibly nice, but that's gonna—that's a car that I've always wanted to do a honk video on, just because. So in school, I did a—I interviewed a 
brand representative from Scion. And so I ended up like learning way too much about Scion, but I'd never driven one of their products before. So do a little a old salute to the ye old TC. From what I can tell, it's a, I mean, it's basically a Corolla with a different body on it with anything that makes the, like it a nice place to be taken out. <laughs> wow, I'm going 62 miles an hour now. But you know what? I'm going to follow the semi. Also, more infatuated with practical or fun cars. You know, that's actually a good question. Um, I'm still, I'm not at the point where I can ever, where I can choose, like, which cars I get to spend time with, really. Um, so, but I like to think that I can find something of value in literally every, you know, um, every automotive product, except for the Murano Cross Cabriolet. <laughs> um, even that. But, okay, an answer to that question. I would say I'm probably going to lend, or I'm going to lean toward practical cars, if we're being honest, uh, because my bias has... Like I've gotten uh, into two car accidents in the past year and a half. And one of those car accidents um, destroyed my, ch my, I mean, my child, my most prized possession, my old Jaguar XJR, um, which I am still grieving over. And then driving just driving in Portland in that urban environment made me really nervous and I'll be honest I'm just now getting to the point never in my life have I been nervous while driving I've been driving since I was seven I got my first car when I was 11 because I grew up on a farm right I've never been nervous driving a car except for maybe then um, and that accident combined with just like the fact that I am that I'm a yokel and having to drive in, a, in an urban environment has made me more anxious. Um, so I would guess I'm going to lean toward the practical. Um, I don't think I would have ever been excited to do <laughs> to like drive a Jetta. Um, but actually, yeah, I think we're going to confirm that answer because I was just thinking this car is about perfect for me to drive right now because it is a very reassuring place to be. So never, never a short answer. I'm sorry. Um, guess we might as well take it on a see I I'm really apprehensive because I actually I just it's been a long time since like or probably never have I had the thing in the back of my mind where I'm like crashing is a possibility I guess that's the what it would changes when you grow up <laughs> um if you believe in luck, my luck has flip-flopped. Because I, I mean, I spent the latter part of my adolescence literally just dry. I would work full-time and then spend all of my money driving my Miata with my girlfriend around rural Missouri. And I mean, I, you know, briskly in the middle of the night and somehow nothing ever happened oh. I'm trying to think of the last compact car I drove it period last compact car I drove period oh my god yeah one of I mean my biggest personal problem is like if you want to know this is 
that I, that period of my life was so wonderful for a lot of reasons. Whereas I think for most people, that's like the worst that, I mean, making my near future even remotely as good as that is like, seems impossible, so. <laughs> My hope with the Jetta is that, with this car, and this car is an, is important to a lot of people, so I'm, I'm excited to do that instead of just like reviewing the Juke Nismo and, or the Evo, uh, or the Murano Cross Cabriolet, just cars that like, you have to have a specific reason to buy. I'm, I'm ex I am excited to review the people's car of the world. Um, well, I'm sorry that you do. I wish you didn't. I wish you had no idea. I would wish that upon pretty much everyone. Um, yeah, I was trying. I haven't really done a review ever. Have I ever done a review of, of just... No. I don't think so. This is my certainly most democratic subject in terms of automotive, automotive writing. So, I'm excited about that. Let's do that. Um, so far, I mean, geez, if I was a young person, just the value. I am wearing a Volkswagen hat. But, you know, so, you shouldn't trust me. But, like, it, it blows my mind that this car is low 20,000s as it's equipped right now. Um, of course, the argument is, you know, never ever buy a new car. But, geez, if, if I had, you know, upper middle class parents and I was about to go to college and they were like, look, we're going to buy you one new car. Your budget is 25000 Two years ago, I would have said, go for a fucking Quattroporte. Um, and those of you who uh, would appreciate that absolutely should, even though it will be a nightmare for 70% of the time, um, go for something interesting if you like cars. But, geez, for those people that, that just want a really competent, you know, who, like, quality matters to them and they just want a car to be really good at doing a lot of stuff from what I've seen so far man this is such a wonderful use of technology um, you know it's an efficient use of technology what I'm really trying to say is damn these screens, though, I'm dry. It's just like the new Rolls Royce, and I know, like, for the people that that the real quote unquote automotive journalists who do this for a living are specifically the type of people to be like to fawn over the details of German engineering, and I am too, but. Uh, you have to like take it as a whole, right? This is competing against the uh, Focus. There is a Jetta GTI. I was flipping through the brochure and I saw a Jetta with it with red lips and a GTI badge. Um, very curious to drive that. But oh, yeah, what I was saying is like. If I was in that, that college situation, damn, this, this right now seems like a damn good uh, option. And it's got, okay, they just changed it, so it's got a six year warranty. That, I mean, you know, that really makes the, the old adage of never buy a brand new car almost worth it. Um, but, 
Jetta GLI, thank you. I promise that when I actually do put out a full written review that I will be much more, uh, much better informed. Best thing about this car is the color, which I know obviously I can't show you, but it's a new one. It's white and silver. I forget what it's actually called. It's like white, silver, metallic. I mean, it's not that creative, you know, it is Volkswagen, but like, it's almost elegant. I'm sure in 10 years, someone buy, whoever buys this car used in 10 years will laugh at me for saying that, but right now it's, I don't know, 2008 Focus hatchback, Ford budget. Well, um, what is that? It's not an ST, is it? Uh, I I think that when the Fiesta and the when the Focus came out first, when the Focus came out, everyone was like, "Wow, this is the best compact car on sale anywhere." And then the Fiesta came out, and everyone was like, "Wow, this is just the best thing that ever happened that's happened to us." When the Fiesta ST, it's not the ST, okay? Um, SEL, okay. Uh, they're extremely attractive. Focus. The new Focus. I, I mean, the Focus has always been attractive. Um, and always been good. Honestly. My friend had a... Early 2000s. Focus, and that, like, that thing dynamically was... Was a fucking blast. Can't, there's no cancel button. I guess I could go the long way home. Let's go the short long way home. Thank you for sticking with me. So far. I love every surface I've touched so far. Steering makes so much sense. <laughs> okay, should I put it in manual? Do I, I knock it over right now? Where's the M7? Right. I don't need my speedometer. I uh, probably, if I'm gonna continue to scope this car stuff with any regularity whatsoever, I should probably actually get a phone windshield mount thing. Ooh. Could have been worse. Once took that bump in a BMW Z3 going 110 miles an hour. It's not, it's forward for up, back for down on this manual selector, but it is quick. Wow. Wow. Compared to that compass, which is just, yes, tire time, I had like, 30 minutes with the car and I just spent the entire time trying to make it fuck up. Ooh.
I do any actual performance driving, I will get a windshield down. About, okay. I love the stocks. Love the way they feel. I'm really impressed by this digital dash, digital instrument cluster. <laughs> Not so impressed with this hat, it's tremendously uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, forgive me. One more alteration here, there we go. experience such a glass house like seating position in a compact before. I wonder if this, if this seat, I haven't really played with the seat if it's like pumped all the way up or what, but this is ideal. This car also has blind spot monitors, which is another favorite of the new oriented me. Also, just generally, I think that's a really fucking handy thing. In the most, in the broad, uh, oh, Apple CarPlay. Yes. My goodness. What? Not in this car. I haven't used it in this car, but I did use it in the Compass. Um, that's a handy fucking thing right there. And I remember in 2011 writing, for God's sakes, can automotive manufacturers just let someone else develop the software for their infotainment systems? But we got a brief little, uh, cute little period where we had, you know, some manufacturers turning themselves into software companies. And of course the result was all bad. That's not actually true. Most of them had other companies do their interfaces, but. It's a little growly, this one. But at least it's not um, in any way underpowered. I mean, I would have gladly accepted that as a concession for the uh, 45 miles per gallon. But again, like, I'm still thinking in that mindset, it came from the Compass, and where that, you know, Fiat Chrysler screwed up yet again. Like, yet again, they uh, fucked up the transmission mapping and pairing with the engine so badly that it is by far the the worst thing about the car. Um, just like the Dart, not quite as bad, but almost. I'm almost finished with that Compass review. I'm gonna try to get that finished tonight. Um, but I'm a little rusty for riding my cars. More than a little rusty. Um, but man, hello! In comparison, God, this thing is good. And of course it is, because the expectations are so different for a, for a Jeep product compared to the best-selling Volkswagen by far. Okay, we're gonna do a, are you ready? We're gonna do a hooligan thing. Or, I don't, I don't think this has lost control, but here we go. And that's 50 miles an hour. I like the weird chorus, the weird harmony that the turbo adds. That is, I wouldn't call it speedy, but it's certainly adequate for what this is. 
more than adequate. Um, and to be honest, okay, I have this thing. I used to be very, very comfortable with taking cars that weren't mine very quickly around country roads. And then I crashed the most expensive car I've ever driven for a review. I crashed a Range Rover Evoque. Okay. And um, turns out no, I didn't sign the right paperwork. Okay, so they just had to take the loss on that. Um, didn't sue me or anything, but like, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, of course, you know, one day I'm like, I'm going to write those people a check, but... Um, there's nothing like re like really uh, confronting even the most jaded young man young man's uh, attitude toward driving like crashing a fifty thousand dollar car. Um, because of like literally I this road I've driven it a billion times, but I forgot I was talking. You, I still have the video. The last thing I said was, come. And then I forgot which corner. I mixed two corners up, and it was the sharp one, and it was nine degrees outside. So the tires didn't grip as well, and I went off. And it was, because it was nine degrees outside, it was so frozen in the ditch that we went off that it just fucking destroyed the uh, front axle of that car. Anyway, like, and now, so this, to this day, I can't see an evoke without feeling a, a tremendous amount of shame and guilt. But, I should probably actually go home. Um, but yeah, so far, man. What, a, what an impressive product. Um, I really... I'm very petty about interiors. And I feel like, actually, all the old stuff that used to f be the content of my video car reviews, it's going to be really difficult to come up with that on a German... on this car, because everything has been looked over by 5,000 German engineers you know, a hundred times. So, I feel like shooting for a nitpick is going to be difficult. Dude, it's your turn. Okay. Nothing. What I was driving, what I'm driving right now is assembled in Mexico. That is great to know. Thank you. Um, this is a brand, brand new car. It has less than 300 miles on it. Um, so, as expected, there is nothing rattling in here. Um, it's sprung pretty taut. So, definitely would have heard that. Um, Okay, we're just gonna timidly go down one slightly twist, twisted road, and then I'm gonna go home, okay? Okay, I have no idea what that noise was. Uh, the, the, what I've read of the manual so far has mentioned, like, if you hear just like a random noise from the engine, that's just the turbo. Okay. As long as it doesn't begin speaking, you know. We're gonna take this nice and easy, but this road has been, hasn't been resurfaced. For a while, yeah. 
good while, so. Getting, getting quite a bit of it. And virtually nothing through the steering wheel. What I, okay, so how I began on that whole car crashing thing is what I was going to say is I wish I was as comfortable taking this on public roads and trying to find its limit, but I, I'll be honest with you, I am not comfortable with that anymore. Um, and there are no racetracks around here. There are like, there's like one paved racetrack in Missouri. <laughs> And that's the Kansas City Speedway, uh, which I think is wonderful on one hand, but also tremendously inconvenient for me. That's what growing up is, yeah. I just I wish it didn't take like me costing someone like fifteen thousand dollars, you know. Maybe one day I'll man up enough to release that video, but it causes me a lot of pain. <laughs> Technically, this car is equipped with the collision avoidance, all the collision avoidance options. Um, again, if it were for convenient, the best thing ever, the best unique take I can have for you is like, let's try that out against deer, because <laughs> that's the real problem. If it weren't for deer, even at 9.30 at night on what you'd be, you'd be reaching if you called these rural roads. They're like pseudo rural roads. Um, if it weren't for deer, I could just fucking thrash these roads, no problem. There's literally no other threat, but because of deer, um, there's always that chance. Okay, well, there's a pedestrian. God, this town was really changed. <laughs> I like, I like the little turbo noises I'm hearing. Obviously this turbo is in place for the sake of efficiency. But. I don't know. It's certainly not intrusive in any sense. Forced induction is the future, bro, bud. Yes, thank you so much for all the, you like, gave me a bunch of tips. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, that sounds too formal. Just thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate that more than you'll ever know. Um, yeah, get back to me when I actually have done my research. <laughs> To be honest, it, it almost, I mean, it's gonna get dirty. It's winter in the Midwest, but like, this color is so gorgeous. <laughs> I really don't wanna fuck up the detail job. Uh, 
Um, as I was talking about on the, on the compass, you know, we put these, we put our engines, our drivetrains in a bind. Sorry, folks. I think this per this car has automatic. You know what? I'm gonna pull in and see if I can find the setting for the automatic uh, headlight dimmers real quick. So this would be the perfect opportunity to test that. Stop start, hate that. Or restore factory settings. Okay. Well, I pulled off the uh, gas station in the middle of the time as any to do the configuration wizard. That is correct. Uh, sure. That's handy. God, you Germans are... That font is actually... kind of absurd. Can I change the font settings on the UI? See, that's so disconcerting, the stop start just deciding to turn the car back on. Okay, this is... Let's not do that right now. Okay. You know what? We'll do this later. Um... Um... Let me look up see if this has the auto dimming headlights not under headlights dimming under auto brightness automatic leveling headlights automatic headlights hello this is thrilling stuff but I'm almost done um, parking lights daytime running lights I just, I'm trying to figure out right now if this car has auto dimming headlights, high beam control light assist. Uh, it can switch this is on at speeds above 37 miles an hour. Okay. Turn the light switch to auto. Forward. Okay. Aha! Auto dimming headlights. I'm not speaking to anyone directly. Um, I might as well tell you that the best auto dimming headlight system I've ever used was the on a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado which I don't know what they used for light sensing back then, but, you know, it's sort of like magic. And for whatever reason, I mean, that car must have, they must have like imbued a little sentience in each one. So this is auto. So I'm at 37, 39, is it gonna switch them on? Yep, it does. Okay. That works. Seems to work. I guess the 
when you're testing something like auto dimming headlights, the most interesting thing is like, how rude is the car willing to be? Um, and to be honest, it flipped on the bright uh, brights in a situation where I would not have. There. Um, okay, so that El Dorado is the lo longest shooter car I've made. Got the opportunity because of my friend to drive a mint 76 El Dorado convertible white, just gorgeous car. I have some pictures of it somewhere. Um, yeah, this... <laughs> Woo! No birth for these auto-dimming headlights, but goddamn is that handy. Um, so, there was a sensor in the Eldorado that looks like, you know, it looks like a ray gun. Um, and it sat behind, sat in the right underneath the rear window, quote unquote window. Um, and somehow that thing was so perfectly tuned, even after 40 years, I, I don't know, the people that restored it might have retuned it. Um, I've 50 years, actually. 40? 40. 40. Um, 40 plus years. Like, knew the difference between oncoming cars and, like, street lights, even. Just. The, the amount of testing that must have taken, or, again, they must have, like, put some sentience in that car. But yeah. Um, so far, in terms of technology, man, this has got everything that I would possibly wish for. And yeah, you know, you could get a similarly equipped Kia Forte for, let me speculate here, probably $4,000 less or more, brand new. And it would have a better warranty. Um, lifetime powertrain warranty. But, and for the, for the theoretical, um, Uh, demographic that the uh, that this Jetta is targeted toward, which would be like young people, right? Um, in the in the United States, at least, I don't think. Oops. All right. Yeah, let's turn off those. that's going to be the side effect of something like auto dimming headlights. And the weird thing is, even after people own this car, that's the craziest thing about all this shit being added, um, is that, you know, you notice that even after people have owned a car for a long time, they will still be confused by features like that. Okay, we're actually going home. Um... According to the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, the eight segment digital fuel gauge, I have used zero fuel in this hour. Which is pretty incredible. Um, I just, I. We're all very impressed. Very, very impressed. We'll see. Uh, the interesting thing, I guess, for me personally, is going to be uh, that I, I it didn't occur to me until on the scope that I haven't actually reviewed a car even remotely as broadly targeted as this car is. I mean, this is the people's car, um, or like with the amount of, the numbers that this car sells globally. Um, so, 
I'm gonna have to figure out what I can add to that conversation, which will be fun. Um, there is a lot to say about this car. Um, but of course, if you're buying, I'm thinking about buying one, as always, and it is more difficult now, but Google something like 2019 Jetta Auto Week or Car and Driver or even Auto Blog. Um, and read. Those people know what they have, know what they're doing, and you generally, you know, especially with like a car like this, those people have driven everything in the segment for the past twenty years. So obviously, they're going to be much more concise than I've already been. But um, I'll try to figure out what I have to contribute. Pretty much everything I've said so far is kind of irrelevant just because, again, this is the most, this is a huge jump um, in technology for me. Since I have stopped talking, finally, um, and there's no one here left, I'm gonna try the rest alone. Uh, but thank you if you're watching this in the future. Bilge.world 